everybody. So this is a super fun interview that we did with Sky. Honestly, probably top 10 favorites. I really, really enjoyed talking to her. We do have a little bit of profanity in this uh, interview. So if that's not your jam, then uh, then probably not the interview for you. So just wanted to give a little heads up before the interview. So uh, thanks so much to Sky, and I uh, hope you all enjoy. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are so excited today to be here with another Hallstar interview that we love talking with the actors that star in our favorite Hallmark movies. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Bree's here. Hello, everyone. Hi. And today we have Sky Marshall here to talk to us about her new movie, To Her With Love. And thank you so much, Sky, for coming on the podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm super pumped to talk about this film. <laughs> yes. Uh, so what we like to do when we have new guests on the podcast is we like to hear a little bit about how you got started and what inspired you to get into acting. Yes. Oh, wow. It's actually <laughs> a pretty wild story, let me tell you, um, because I didn't get into acting until I was 28 years old. So a lot of people told me, um, oh, it might be a little too late or there might be a not, not, not enough opportunity. You don't have a resume. You don't have a rep. You don't have a reel. You don't let him sag. Like, <laughs> and I just kind of took that as, uh, okay, well, I've tried everything else that I thought I was interested in and it didn't work. And that was, I was active duty military in the Air Force. I was corporate New York at a big pharmaceutical marketing firm and sitting at that cubicle for two years is where I learned that that was my idea of health. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, as a child, my mother had me uh, doing performing arts constantly in theater, ballet, jazz, gymnastics. So I was no stranger to the stage. I was just conditioned for so long to see art as a hobby and not a career. So it took me to have to uh, go in multiple other paths before I leaned into that little artist, that 12 year old ballerina in my body that was screaming, I'm so bored. Can we please go and have fun? And I did. And at 28, I uh, packed up, left the corporate world and went to Los Angeles. And I started from the absolute bottom and worked my way up. And it was not easy, but I kept telling myself, it's not about what you're doing. It's about who you're being while you're doing it. So while I was a caterer, I would convince myself that I was a spy getting into parties I would never get invited to. <laughs> when I was doing background work, I would tell myself that this was a paid internship and I was there to learn. So like I had to constantly trick my, at that time, 30, early 30s year old brain um, it, into why is it okay that I'm catering and doing background work and driving Uber in my 30s with a bachelor's degree and, um, and a completed military <laughs> enlistment. Uh, so the ego tried to play its way and I just had to shut that voice all the way up and just lean into the unknown and I failed my way up. That's oh how I got God. into acting. <laughs> I love that I story. Yeah, me too, I me really too. did. I did. I just was like, dare to suck. I <laughs> dare you, Sky. I dare you to just go and suck at something and yeah. until until it just becomes fun. I have to ask. So I was served in the Air Force too. I actually still live here, here in San Antonio. <laughs> yes, oh my I was security goodness. forces. Stop so it. I was like, oh, what wait, job what? was she doing? <laughs> What that job was she doing wait, so and thinking you, I should be an are actress? You, <laughs> right. Were you at, are you a Lackland Air Force Base? I, I retired out of Lackland. Yep. I so wow. I'm still here. Still here. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh what, my goodness. That's so, so when cool. you were serving, like were you thinking yeah. of acting while you were serving or or well, no? Here's here's a funny thing. Um, while I was active duty Air Force, I was stationed at Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas. So I mean stars and, and stripes and stages everywhere there right so I was all I, I was influenced constantly by performing arts because of all of the the lights in in Vegas but there remind me the name there was a performing arts group in the military stars and stripes is that what they were stars called? and stripes yep stars and stripes yeah so I I wanted to audition for stars and stripes so bad but 9-11 happened and that didn't work out and then they would have an annual performing arts. Uh, see this, when I say shit like this to people in the Marines and the Army, they want to punch me in the face. I'm like, in the Air Force, <laughs> we have like an annual performing arts um, 
event that happens and they're just like kill yourself this is why we can't stand you yeah. um <laughs> but yeah I would do that every year I think the last one I did a one woman show where I was Janet Jackson and I made everybody sit through Rhythm Nation as I did every single finger on the count and it was <laughs> my friends enjoyed it <laughs> but yeah so again it was always in me like the art is never left she found her way to perform in every every career field that I I poured myself into. Even corporate New York, I'd be at the boardroom trying to close these million dollar you know deals, and it was a character that I had created. And my clients would eat it up. They would any excuse for them to leave New Jersey to come into Manhattan and have me take them to Nobu on the company card, and I would just have them cracking up laughing. And, you know, so it was there always. It just wasn't something that I allowed myself to embrace or to give myself permission because there was no structure. Mm -hmm. There's no, uh, yeah. Yeah, I can see what you're saying because I kind of felt the same way about uh, in my other job, I work as a film critic and Mm. I never really, I always thought that would be a a cool job, but for some reason I just never thought of as a realistic possibility for me. And then it just kind of evolved that I ended up doing that. Uh, and uh, I'm so glad that it has. But I don't know. It's just like I never, it's not like I didn't think I could do it. I just didn't even think it was a possibility that I could do it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, so you get it. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I also get the cubicle hell thing because I <laughs> I had the same, ex- oh, same yeah. experience. <laughs> like never again. Exactly. Yes. Like, oh, I would have like, my weekends would be like, oh my goodness, just turned up and having this blast. And then on a Monday morning, I'm in this neutral, very bland office having some yeah. punk try to check me about my PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> I'd be like, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I just tried on cue on a black box in the Lower East Side and everyone here. <laughs> like, I don't know why I'm here. You know? yeah. man was so, not meant um, yeah. to sit all day in between a tiny little box with no windows uh-uh. you know what <laughs> and and for those who are meant to be in have you seen the show severance it felt like yeah. severance yeah you know i'm like yeah. if those if there are people out here who live for those kind of moments and that kind of structure and mm-hmm. and that kind of uh containment and right. And, and God bless them. Thank you so much for your service because every job in the world makes the world go round. Yes. You know? So it's like, I appreciate the ones who do have passion for it because they absolutely are needed. It's just with my extremely eclectic personality, it felt like um, I was a caged animal Yeah. and I, I had to do something about it. Yeah. And, and TV and film was a perfect place to let my inner child just run free. Like I, yeah. I, I'm torn between, am I immature or am I just really enjoying life to the absolute fullest? Because my inner child is at play most of the day. Um, yeah. Whether it's doing auditions, you know, we're playing make-believe. Yeah. Like when I was doing um, Black Lightning for CW, I'm, I'm standing I mean, those, that show shoots 12, 14 hour days and you have extra grown men working in the crew and we're all just staring at a fake other grown man hanging from some cords with some elastic on and a cape um, <laughs> going pew, pew, pew with his fake gun and we're in just all and we can't wait to come back tomorrow and do it all over again. Yeah. And I would just sit there and I'm like, this is hilarious that we are just a bunch of kids given a lot of money to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the way that we serve is we allow everyone else who is smart enough not to get in this industry to be able to escape their reality and turn on the TV and be able to take a break from their day to day. We're able to allow people who don't give themselves permission on a day to day to feel all of their emotions on the spectrum. You know, somebody can't remember the last time they cried unless it was like a movie or a TV show or get so angry or so scared, right? Because, you know, we we get into this very comfortable state of living that TV and film allows to us to just get those emotions all provoked. And it wasn't until the pandemic, until the lockdown happened where the whole world 
was told to stay indoors that I that it really hit me how so like most of the world turned to TV and film and music they yeah. turned to us yeah. and it was the first time that I had ever felt like an essential worker mm-hmm. you know they turned yeah. to podcasts you know they they turned to entertainment and and it was it was really cool it was really mm-hmm. great because there are a lot of times where you uh, will be in this industry of TV and film as an actor and you see the surface level part of like how much am I going to get? And is it going to be theatrical release? Or is it, you know, it's just like, okay, get over yourself. Like there's a bigger picture here. Yeah. And, um, and, and yeah, the lockdown definitely gave me that perspective. Today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by W Rated, the podcast where we willingly watch the world's worst rated movies. Join me, Daisy. And me, Claire, as we break down the IMDb Bottom 100, choosing a different film from the list every episode. We take a deep dive into the plot, production, release and reviews, usually with a special guest to uncover if these films are truly as bad as everyone says they are. You can find us on Spotify, Apple, Good Pods and anywhere else you find your podcasts. It's true. It definitely, we all needed our binges bit bad during the pandemic. Right? I mean, people were going in the vault. I was like, girl, what you watching? <laughs> Golden Girls. What? <laughs> She's yeah. like, yeah, I finished all 47 seasons of Netflix. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so you just, you just finished Netflix. Got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, then Golden Girls seems like the next move. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was so the yeah. nanny for me. That was the one that I... I, we, I, I've been nice. I love I went, show. yeah, I yeah. went back to, I went back to Martin. Oh, Martin oh. Lawrence's show. <laughs> yeah. I went way back. Good time. So do you remember the first role that you got uh, on film? Oh my goodness. I would hope nobody goes and tries to look that up, but uh, <laughs> I need to talk to my lawyer first. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Take it down, take it down. Uh, let me get all with my team. Uh, next question. No, um, <laughs> I think it was, uh, <laughs> it was this indie film called Reservation and it was a horror film because, you know, horror films uh-huh. always give, uh, they're kind to new actors, right? Sure. Um, it's easier as a new talent to get into a horror indie than I think any other genre of film. And uh, yeah, so I did this, this horror piece. I think Master P was one of the executives. <laughs> Um, he's in the film and so that was something that they built together and I auditioned for it and I remember I was super nervous because I didn't know how to pretend to die and um, (laughs) I was like please just let them cut me at the end like okay and cut Uh, or like or done (laughs) right and don't let me have to be like "Ah, ah, ah, ah," for like ever in an audition because that's just it's embarrassing internally and externally so I went, I did it, and they did. They dragged out the whole death scene in of the audition. Of course. <laughs> I wanted to punch myself in the face, dust off my bachelor's degree, and get on the first fucking plane back to New York. But I didn't. And uh, I stayed, and I booked it. And that was the first time I booked yeah. the film. And it was really fun. We were out in Joshua Tree. Um, oh. And we had, like, a trailer. And, and yeah, the movie was called Reservation. And it's about a bunch of punks drinking and having fun on like respectable Native American reservation burial lands. And then they come up and jack us up. Oh my gosh. Just off the yeah. bachelor's degree. <laughs> Fresh off that, this is what I'm doing. This is what I, these are, this goes in the vault of secrets my mother will never know. Uh, when she's like, so how's that little career going? It's going really good. Um, it's going really good. I'm doing this Native American project. It's going to be pretty. Um <laughs> I'm like, what's under straight to DVD? That's where it's going. <laughs> so, w- walk us through, like, how do you get ready for? You've got this new part. How do you mentally get ready? Deal with any nerves? All of the things. Well, that's a great question. Um, honestly, there is, uh, there has been from the very beginning uh, as an actor. This this interesting calling that I've had to this, to where um, 
like uh, like this interesting spiritual connection that I have where people are like, um, so you've always wanted to be an actor? I'm like, no, I tried. I avoided it with all of my heart and it kept pulling and pulling and pulling until I gave in. And ever since I did give in, the roles, especially the ones that are like meaningful for me, they were always in perfect alignment with something I was going through in my personal life that I didn't want to look at. And it made me look at it or it made me have to feel feelings that I was trying to avoid. So through acting, I think coming into it, starting as a grown adult, it has, I have hijacked a lot of the characters that I've played to therapeutically heal myself with a lot of things I was going through in my life. So for instance, I'll give you an example. I was in a relationship, we were engaged, engagement ended, right? So then that same week that he was moving out, I booked Fox 911, where I had to play a pregnant woman who has to give birth in the lobby of her apartment building with no medication. So if you have children, you get it. Mm -hmm. I had to use my imagination, but in that moment, of having to pretend to give unmedicated labor in the lobby of my building, it, I gave myself permission to scream and cry as humanly loud as possible. Mm -hmm. I gave myself permission to just roar. I let the inner animal come out and the feelings that we all feel when we have that type of experience or trauma or betrayal, where you want to, many times we don't give ourselves that kind of permission. So now here I am on set for 12 hours, screaming, hollering, and crying. And the interesting thing is one of my girlfriends is a series lead on that show. So she played the paramedic and she knew what I was going through. And so it was her looking me in the eyes where I saw it as a friend looking at me saying, I need you to push. And I received that as like, I need you to release your emotions. Stop trying to be strong. Stop trying to be fine. Let it go. And I did. And it was the, the brain and the heart doesn't know that we're playing make-believe, right? It's, it's responding to... The, the imagery that we, we give ourselves as actors. So our emotions are responding to that. So I am now emotionally freeing myself of all the things that I had to pull into. So that has happened in so many different roles that I have booked. That is that is really, I mean, you talk about method. I mean, this is even a step, yeah. step further. It's but literally- here's the thing. Being a method actor is a choice. Mm -hmm. I'm not choosing for a right. lot of things to happen to me. And then the role comes right after, because right after that, after I went through that, the next job I booked was um, Mambo Marie on Chilling Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix. And uh -huh. that was an opportunity for me to put my crown back on. I had powers. She was grace. She yeah. was gorgeous. Like, it was like, okay, you've had your thing. You went through your emotional trauma. Now put your crown back on, get back into it, be your boss, be powerful, be black magic. And, and that's what that opportunity for a whole year uh -huh. gave me. It poured all of that back into me. And I, you know, and, and for me, and they, honey, that was, they said to me, they were like, um, we got an audition for you. It's a Haitian priestess. I said, a what? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 <laughs> a Haitian voodoo, a Haitian voodoo priestess. I was like, um, so y'all know I don't, you know, you know, uh, I'm not Haitian, right? You know what? I can't just pull a Haitian accent out of my right, right now. <laughs> it was like, well, you know what? You'll figure something out. It's when sad too. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I literally just like comb the internet. I'm like Haitian, 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 Haitian. Um, and then I'm like, and then I just kind of learned uh, my version of a Haitian accent. And then again, I had just got my confidence back. So I just went in there and, and you could deliver anything with confidence, honey. And they'll just be like, <laughs> sure, it works. And somehow it works. But then I'm like, oh God, I now have to take this terrible Haitian accent to Netflix where the entire globe can now judge me. I combed 
my comments and DMs trying to find some Haitian to destroy me so I could feel validated. And nobody did. I was just like, it was one girl. She was just like, they couldn't have just got a Haitian. And I replied back. I was like, I know, right? <laughs> girl, that was stressful. <laughs> I was oh like, but thank you. Someone was honest with me because I was like, there's no way I'm pulling this off. Well, you must so have I had did. fun being in Black yeah, Lightning. I had so- oh, yeah. No, that was incredible. That was my first recurring role. Yeah. So that was a blast because I was like the secret bad guy that nobody knew. No one ever expected it was going to be me. So it was really nice for me to like flip open Twitter in the finale. And they're like, I knew it was her. I could never stand her. And I was like, sorry, guys. Um, and then, you know, roll over to Sabrina and the, kind of the comic book genre has been a blast for me. Because like I said at the beginning of this, it's that inner child just being able to just play and imagine and and have so much fun. And that's what that's what being an actor is for me is just giving that part of me privilege to still exist, because I feel like we as human beings, we have this structure where we get to a certain age and now we have to adult we have to grow yeah. up and anything that resemblance your teenage years your adolescence or your childhood is called immature and that's not fair mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah that's true you know yeah so so yeah um it, it's it's i feel so much younger now than i did when i was working corporate 12 years ago and that's wild to me mm-hmm. i look younger Mm-hmm. Then I did. Oh, we love that for you. We love that. Thank you. Yes. Really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, tell us about to her with love, uh, in your role in it. Ah, <sighs> what a fun movie! It's, I mean, really, just to, I don't want to say too much, but yeah, it's it's two teachers that fall in love while trying to save the art department of this school, and the character that I play, she is working at this amazing private school and then the hammer comes down and she loses her job because she was actually just subbing for another amazing teacher and now she has to return back to her hometown and that hometown is small it was the it was where she was trying to escape to the big city and she has to now go back to her parents and her old friends and there's a public school and she goes there and it's just nothing like her private school so in her attempt to lift the school up to her standards they actually bring her down and get her back grounded to the small town woman that she is and in the mix of that she falls in love um the private school wants her back and now she has to decide should she stay or should she continue climbing the ladder okay i just have to say from the previews as okay i am going through teacher certification now and I was like, when you guys were arguing about classroom, you're like, I I got my classroom management. I'm like, they stress that so hard. <laughs> really? Oh, I, I love it. Wait to see the entire scene, but just I that haven't preview. even seen a preview. I have seen nothing, so I'm so jealous. It's fantastic. It's fantastic, and I just love seeing two black educators. Yes. I just isn't that representation that i'm so excited yes, yes i'm so excited about that and i'm so excited because this is the first time that that there will be tape of me doing comedy and and being funny and lighthearted. yeah okay so did you audition like how did you find out about this movie how are we getting sky marshall in to her with love oh that is a very very fun story <laughs> Because, uh, I mean, not fun for everybody. Let me just put that disclaimer down there because the lead that they had, um, she got COVID, right? So then Uh, I get a phone call from my manager and she's like, hey, so uh, this film that you didn't audition for um, would like for you to be the lead of their project. And if the script speaks to you, you'll need to be on the plane tonight. I'm like, huh? They're like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, on a plane. Where, where are we? Go- I'm in LA already. Where are we- oh, it's in North Carolina. North Carolina for how long? Three weeks. Oh, um, <laughs> okay. Well, send the script. Uh, when do they need to know? In two hours. Oh, okay. So then I just had to like comb through the script 
I, I couldn't eat the whole script because they needed to know so fast and I still needed to like figure out the logistics of my life and if I could pull this off. And, um, and then once I decided, I was just like, okay, I'm doing this film. Once I then got to the airport, I um, sat down and then I just really combed through the script and I cried twice and I was like, damn it. So then I reached out to my manager. I was like, the script made me cry. And she was like, it's Hallmark, baby. And I was like, here we go. <laughs> um, so then, <laughs> so then I was like, yeah, here we go. Like, and I, I got to set and I'm one of the first people I knew was the director, Stan. And I was like, Stan, hi, I'm Sky. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks so much for having me. I'm just curious. Like, um, who threw my name in the mix? Because there is no evidentiary support in the world that I could do comedy. I knew that I could and I've been dying to do comedy, but I just booked drama all the time. And he was like, oh, I didn't know that you booked the role until you already got to North Carolina. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Cool, 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 cool. He was like, honestly, I'm not even, I'm not sure if you're right for it. I mean, you're a great drama actress, but I just never say you be funny. And I was like, that's what the whole world believes. So thank you. I'm glad I'm here. And I'm glad I didn't have to audition because every time I do, comedy actresses always beat me because they have the comedy resume tape. So I then went to the pro executive producers. I asked them, please tell me who threw my name in the mix. I would love to thank them. Not one of those three executive producers could tell me. They said, oh, the studio executive, she'll be here um, tomorrow. You should ask her. I asked her. They all just laughed and was a little dumbfounded. And they just kept, you know, saying like, well, this is just a, a I don't know, a spiritual alignment. I'm like, somebody had to have, <laughs> I just want to thank someone. And they're like, and we would love to take credit for it because you're crushing it. Um, till today, oh my I God. do not know who put my name in the mix. And I have never met the casting director before. So it's not like she remembered me from another audition. My reps didn't even submit me for it. Till today, it is the one of the most craziest mysteries of my career. Oh my gosh. Well, but all I can do <laughs> is say it. thank you. Right. All I can do is say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because <laughs> Hallmark gave me that first opportunity without me having to prove myself. And comedy was always the core of my person. I mean, you see, we're talking on yeah. podcasts. I mean, I'm trying my hardest not to say curse words, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, comedy has just always been the core of my personality. And yeah. it was just fun to finally be able to put that on on screen and just again just play and. And Tobias, who plays Jordan, was absolutely incredible to bounce off of. And, and everybody was so supportive because they knew that, like, I just got the script and, like, didn't have real prep time. But then you have other projects like the one right before the Hallmark film, um, Good Sam, the medical drama that I did for CBS. I had to go in as a, you know, amazing Black heart surgeon. Uh, working in the cardiothoracic department and I would have to go in and be able to say off the, off the tip of my tongue um, catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia and I have to say it like it's nothing right oh yeah. my gosh yeah so like a role <laughs> like that did require prep where I'm just literally laying under my sheet staring at the ceiling catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia and I'm like oh god please <laughs> I'll Give Bless. me back the Haitian. I'll take the right. Haitian over this. The voodoo any priestess. Day. Any I'll day. I'll go back to voodoo priestess. The Haitian accent is no longer challenging. Um, God, I think so, all yeah, that. So I, I think all that praying helped you. I, I think it was inspired. You got the people, it, it, Honey, I'm telling you, yeah. but that's what it is. It's just you're, the prep is in the 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 play and the fear and the unknown. It's really just uh, I have no. Uh, formula on how mm -hmm. I prepare for a character at all. Um, it just depends on how familiar am I with the character. And um, with the playing, you know, the school teacher and to her love, I was familiar with um, that environment because my mother uh, was, is, was a school teacher um, for many years. 
And then my father was a doctor. So when I played the, the surgeon, I had him in my corner to just kind of help talk me through certain things on just being comfortable in this, in this, in the situation. And then also I worked as an OR tech for three years in Chicago at a plastic surgery clinic. So I knew my way around the OR. So it's just like, I, as, again, I think starting as an adult, I had a lot of life experience to bring to acting versus just, uh, getting formally trained as a teenager well with it being so kind of rushed how did you work on getting chemistry with Tobias was it just sort of natural or did you have to kind of work on it yeah Tobias is I call him an earth angel he's just like one of those people that is just salt to the to the earth he's, he, you know you he he can pick up on energy really quick and if he vibes with you he's all in he's wide open like he's that kind of guy and I'm that kind of woman as well. Um, this, If I meet someone, eventually you'll feel like by the end of that day, we're mates. Um, we can, we don't, cause you know, trying to make, like I just moved to Brooklyn and I, I went out and had lunch with a woman for the first time who I had known over through work and it felt like a date. And she was even telling me, like, I know you like bright colors, so I got my nails yellow. And I'm like, why are we doing this? And we do this, we as women, like, we make we make new friends. And it, yeah. and it feels like we're dating each other when really I'm like, girl, put <laughs> on your pajamas, take your makeup off, come <laughs> over, open the fridge without asking, get on the couch, and let's binge some of this old school sex in the city. Like, we don't, we don't have to do the date thing. Like, let me know if you're available Tuesday or Thursday. I'm free between one and four if you want to go for a hike. <laughs> Or I know I it's like, oh, this is exhausting. So, you know, <laughs> Tobias, that was completely not the case. Um, he just went right in and just, he, he, he'll, he just broke the personal bubble and I, I just allowed it. It's those people that start with, sorry, I'm a hugger. And it's like, you don't have to apologize. I'm into it. <laughs> and then we just kind of made it happen and we didn't want to, like rush that even still because, you know, I still wanted those first meetings of him to feel real. Like, you know, and, and a lot of times they don't shoot in consecutive order, but for this film there, when it came to Tobias, they did save a lot of the juicy connected scenes um, in the third week of production. So that was good. Cause we had now already spent two weeks together that it felt more, more real versus sometimes with film and TV, they'll throw that into the scene in like the first day. And you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know this person yet. Yeah. Um, or we haven't had time yet to to give each other, you know, certain permissions. Um, so yeah, so he was amazing. He was amazing from beginning, middle and the end. He was really great at taking my feedback and really great at giving me um, like his ideas, you know, because it was, moving really quickly and wanting to make sure I kept, you know, I, I kept a piece of the vision that they had with the original actress that they hired, but also bring a whole other layer of sky that I know no one else could ever, ever replicate yeah. because I am me, you know? And, and they did, they, they all said the creative team was just like, you definitely took this character in another direction because they do tend to look at the comedy being the, the, the core of the craft of the actor that they, they hire um, versus what if it is drama? What if that person can bring a lot of that good juicy drama and then happen to be funny versus being really funny and they might be able to cry on cue, maybe, right? It's like, why not lean into someone with both? And I did, and and we just, you know, I'm super nervous, but uh, we'll see. So this has a lot of comedy then, because it's on movies and mysteries, isn't it? I think it's on. Well, it's 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 not a a lot of it, but it it is a rom com. It's definitely mostly mm -hmm. romance, but they but while you're filming, it's like they wanted to make sure, like. Let's make sure we find the light moments. Let's make sure mm -hmm. we find the funny. Like, let's yeah. make sure, you know, it's still the brand of Hallmark, you know, um, but it's definitely not murder and it's definitely not mystery. It is. 
<laughs> yeah, so that preview that I watched, I was laughing. So I was like, yeah, I it was hope like this Hallmark is the tone. Brothers and Sisters. I was like, yeah. whoa. <laughs> okay. Since you brought it up, I have to ask, what Sex and the City character is your fave? Well, you know what? Honestly, I believe that my favorite is Carrie. And I know that's an easy out to say, mm-hmm. but I I think that because I have watched the entire series maybe five times, oh. um, that ki- and no, oh, I have something even better for you because during um, the the beginning of the Black Lives Matter movement, they um, the WGA, the Writers Guild of America, did this charity to raise funds and they reached out to actresses of color to read, do these uh, table reads on Zoom uh, of different really popular episodes of TV series that were all white females. And so they reached out to me and asked if I wanted to do a episode of Sex in the City. And I was like, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, let me guess, Mar- let me guess, Miranda. And they were like, no, we want you to read for Carrie Bradshaw. And I was like, oh, Lord, oh, oh. Lord. Jesus, somebody hold the ball up. I'm going down. And I was just like, what? So then a couple of other actresses who I love got to also be on there to play uh, Samantha and another girl that I knew played Miranda. And they were Latina actresses that I, I adore. And uh, and it was just so much fun that I was just like, I cannot believe. And I was doing her voice and I was doing her stupid mouse scream that she does. Like, I, because I knew it way too well. Uh-huh. Um, so yes, I say Carrie because I feel like when they created Sex in the City that Miranda Charlotte and um, Samantha are the personalities of Carrie. Like if you were, if she had imaginary friends that all uh, represented different parts of Carrie, it would be the three of them because they're so strong in, in, in their character, like the description of their character. But Carrie is a collection of all three of those. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's, the, I, I feel like I am definitely more of the three of them in one. Um, did you watch uh, And Just Like That? I sure did. And <laughs> and just like that, all my friends yelled and bailed on me because they were like, nope, don't like it. And I was like, I don't care, I'm riding with it. <laughs> I just, they have this, they have this hook on me. I'm in, I'm all in until they die. I am here, I am here. We- we covered um, it on the podcast. I mean, we've been covering Sex in the City, so it's been a lot of fun. Oh <laughs> yeah, it goodness. wasn't the best. I love it. I think it but... was overwhelming for a lot of people yeah. to see was... them try and push so many movements in one. Because mm-hmm. um, yeah. yeah. they're like, let's make sure everyone's taken care of. Let's make sure everyone's seen and covered and heard. Mm-hmm. And it was like, a, it, you know, a lot of people felt like it was a little too on the nose. It was like, come on, guys, we get it. Like, chill yeah, out. they overcorrected, I think, a, a, a bit. But uh, we had fun covering yeah. it. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, well. I still I still enjoyed it. I mean, mm-hmm. but yeah, I do. Yeah. feel I felt like somebody had like a like a, a clipboard. And was like, yep, got yeah. the Asian. We're good there. We're good there. Oh, well, yep, we got the, <laughs> got the wheelchair. Got the yep. non-binary. What else did we need? Shit. Yeah. Um, and yep. it was just like, we get it. We see your effort, and thank you, thank you for your mm-hmm. service. Um, but it's cool. We're so, good. is your family excited to see uh the new yes. movie? My, Are they my, having yes. a watch party? This is, I mean, this is their jam, Hallmark mm-hmm. Channel, and now I get to be on there. It's like they they grew up with the Hallmark channel. My dad keeps texting me. Is it on this weekend? Nope. Still <laughs> September 11th. Uh, yeah. It's a pretty, pretty memorable day, dad. I don't think, <laughs> I don't know why you keep forgetting. This is alarming. Then my mom, she's in Chicago. And so I'm going to fly her here to New York so she could sit on my couch with me and watch it. Aww, um, that's so good. Well, see, I yeah. love it. It's like my, my mom watches it. My great aunts watch it. My aunts watch it. So I'm just excited that it's part of the new Mahogany film franchise. So for you being part of this and it's still fresh, it's still new. What are you excited about for Mahogany and what what's to come? I'm very excited with Mahogany because Black love is a real thing. It's not just a hashtag, you know. Um, it's something I get to experience on a day-to-day. It's something that I've watched growing up. 
And it was something that I didn't see often in films that weren't considered the Black film genre, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't on the mainstream platform like a Hallmark, right? Hallmark reaches the masses, my goodness. That to be able to have that platform and it not have to go under the BET umbrella or the place where we always send our films. Um, it's beautiful that Hallmark has created this um, this yummy. It's it, it's like it's like if Hallmark was the kitchen, you know, mahogany is like opening up the seasoning cabinet, right? <laughs> Yeah, You know, you just, it's just all the seasoning, right? The mahogany has all the seasoning and the flair and the hair and the clothes and the way we talk and speak to each other and the way we move. And it's just under this beautiful light of, of us. And it felt really great. And, and it, I'm a massive fan of Karen Pittman, you know? So when I heard that she did mahogany's first film, I was just like, oh my God, I'm following mm -hmm. Karen Pittman. Because uh, if she'll do it, I'm doing it, right? Like, you know, uh, because again, I only had two hours to make this decision. So while I was familiar with the mahogany brand with the, the cards and, um, and, and the talk around town about it, I didn't know, like, you know, for us, we're like, well, what have they done? Can I see some of the work? Like, is it good quality? Like, I didn't have time to do all of that. All I had to do is, see Karen Pittman and I said yes because I I I'm a massive fan and I I know that she does excellent work and I know that she wouldn't attach her name to anything that wasn't grand and 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 beautiful and gorgeous and impactful. And um so within that two hours of me deciding that also played a, a big impact. Um it's gonna be really weird when I finally meet Karen because I talk about her way too much. I'm just starting to realize <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, the likes and comments on Instagram is one thing, but <laughs> now I've taken it to podcasts and I should probably talk to my therapist about it. Anyway. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Yesterday, when we were watching the new movie uh, on Twitter, Joyful Drake, she said that it's the first time she'd ever been able to wear her natural hair in a role. I thought huh. that was amazing. Like, Isn't I love something? this mahogany. For oh, yeah, same. Like yes. This was my first time wearing all of my hair out on a film. That's amazing. And, and it was uh, scary. And mm -hmm. it shouldn't be, but it was scary. I was like, am I going to get heat damage? Wait, should I wrap it at night? What's going to happen tomorrow? <laughs> I'm just used to giving the wig back. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, like it was scary. Like I was over conditioning my hair. Every time I felt a, a blow of humidity, I was like, it's ruined, isn't it? They're like, girl, if you don't go sit down. You know, but it, it felt so good, honestly, because we were able to like switch up the styles when we wanted to. I just knew that I was in trusted hands uh, when I walked in and saw a beautiful collection of black and brown people there ready to serve us our looks. And I, 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 I know that we want to really push and lean into the movement of natural hair. Um, but the conversations around natural hair care need to happen 
more often than mm. it than it is. You can't just learn that in school, get certified, get into the union, get into the trailer. And if you don't have, you know, uh, children or your children's friends or your own friends who have the texture of coarse and kinky and curly hair, then you're not skilled. I don't right. care where you went to school. So at the end of the day, when I am in Los Angeles and New York and Vancouver, majority of the time when I walk into a trailer, it is white women and they're super excited and super pumped and they've watched some TED Talks and, and some <laughs> YouTube videos and they're like, I got it. I got it. I got yeah. it. Oil, cream, gel, slick, edges. Cool. Let's go. And then the care of it is where um, I have fallen victim and I've had to shave all of my hair off twice from oh damage. So I love that the conversations are happening more. I think that more workshops should take place within the industry around the care. And I think that more black hairstylists um, should be motivated and inspired to get into the union, you know, because we have some incredible hairstylists that are dying to get into TV and film, but they can't get into the union um, because they can't get enough hours and credits. So that's a whole other conversation. I think majority of TV and film can't wait for us to wear our real hair. I don't think a lot of people love the wigs anymore. Like mm -hmm. it's because why? Because TVs and movie screens are getting even more crystal high definition clear that the wigs is just a bit like daunting now. We could get away with that before when it was standard TV. <laughs> but um, now it's like, honey, we need to see your scalp. Otherwise, that looks like a screen door, <laughs> your lace front wig. I can see it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I was watching the movie last night and I was like, here I am sitting here with my box braids and one of the hair, like Risa on the movie last night had braids. And I was like, have I ever seen a Hallmark movie with a girl that has braids? I don't think so. Right. I'm loving this. <laughs> oh love my it. goodness. That is so true. Yeah. Erica <laughs> Ash had her braids. Yes. Yeah, she it did. Is so good. I love Erica. I love Erica's amazing. <laughs> she's a friend and she's absolutely amazing. And she was someone else within those two hours of me having to decide. I called Erica and I asked her her opinion. How was it working with um, mahogany? And she was like, it was absolutely extraordinary. I had the time of my life. And you better say yes. And I was like, I'm done. <laughs> Hung up the phone. And uh, and yeah, and I was on a plane shortly after. Yeah. Well, so they say they're advertising. They have a cameo from Shanice in the movie. Was yeah. that fun to meet her? Oh, Did it you was get to meet her? Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, she's great. And, and to hear her live on the stage... Oh my goodness. She I'm not even I'm not even exaggerating. I hope they just let it play out a bit and not cut it too short because the way that she the way that she can hit those high notes. It's, it's I mean she's amazing. She's she, her voice is just as it was in the early 90s when she first came out and she did some Broadway as well back mm -hmm. in, the, in the day. So um she was really excited to to get back into the mix. And we were just so grateful that she was all already from the East Coast. She was in Virginia at the time doing the show. So mm -hmm. it was easy for her to just pop down and, and help us out. And, and she definitely brought it. And we had so much fun. And she's so sweet and kind. That's cool. Like, I yeah, I can't, I can't wait to see how they cut this. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd like to end with some fun questions. <laughs> All right. Not that the previous questions haven't been fun. Hopefully they have. Uh, first question, what is the best ice cream flavor? Best ice cream flavor, which my boyfriend will argue with me, um, is chocolate. Yeah. Chocolate, mm. chocolate, chocolate. Preferably like a Nutella hazelnut if we're in the gelato area, right? Okay. Um, but if we're just kicking it old school ice cream um, or even soft, then I definitely go chocolate all the way. Mm. Sounds good. Yeah, that's my jam. Now, <laughs> if I want to get bougie and go to like Yogurtland, throw the Reese's Pieces on side on top of like a peanut butter ice cream. Oof. <laughs> that sounds oh. good. Yeah, that's now that that but that's like when I'm that's when I'm feeling like a baller, right? Not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the steak of ice cream, right? But yeah, that. <laughs> well, what is your favorite color? Turquoise. Um, I love turquoise and anything around turquoise, like teal, mm -hmm. sky blue, mm -hmm. maybe like, yeah, but turquoise is, teal. is all, oh yeah. And now like people are matching teal with plums. Oh, 
like that, that whole palette right there. Definitely my jam. Yeah. What was the last song to get stuck in your head? Oh my goodness. Uh, that Beyonce song from, um, you know, I'm right my home. Oh my you gosh. Right my, soul, and I'm <laughs> my 13 oh year my old goodness. daughter sings it all the time. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I was like, nobody's going to break my soul. I wish I could stop singing this song. <laughs> oh goodness. And then everywhere I go, it's just release your mind, release your trade, release your job. I'm like, oh, it's not ever leaving my head. <laughs> so that's, that's the song that's currently trapped in my head rent free. Well, what is your go-to date night food? Ooh, go-to date night food. Um, uh, I mean, I, my favorite food is sushi. I love, 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 love sushi. Um, I can eat sushi all day and it just makes me feel so good. So sushi is my jam, mm-hmm. but date night, um, I used to love treating myself like two, three times a year to a really great ribeye with a cream spinach and a glass of Chianti. Mm-hmm. Like that was my kill meal. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. and and, and my man makes an insane ribeye that's so good. Every ribeye I've had in a restaurant since can't touch it. So I just stopped ordering uh, a ribeye when I want to treat, because I don't eat a lot of meat, but when I do, like that's the thing. And because he's so great at that, um, date night for me, the best meal date night is right here at home where he makes his uh cajun ribeye with cream spinach and a glass of yeah. yum. <laughs> i'm like saying it loud so you can hear it and hopefully get <laughs> hint, hint, hint. <laughs> yeah. it's my favorite okay so you want a night out what are you gonna do what's your night out activity of choice oh i love live music like back in the day when house of blues was like the spot House of Blues was like a vibe, but it's not so much anymore. But I do, yeah, I love live music. So if I can go and if we're in New York, hop on a subway, go in a Soho, walk around. I love walking. I love just kind of getting lost in like the West Village and the meatpacking and um, and then find somewhere yummy to eat. I prefer like the small mom and pop restaurants that like nobody can get into, but you somehow got there when someone canceled their reservation, like those kind of moments <laughs> where you feel like you really won. Um, and then you can't wait to tell them, this is my first time here. Cause you think somehow they're going to do something special to your meal, but it's just like, no, you're going to get the same shit. They're gonna do. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, sit down, eat there, fill up, have a glass, keep walking, grab dessert somewhere and then in somewhere where there's live performance, whether live performance, even be like stand up comedy at the cellar. Right. Or, mm-hmm. um, and it, yeah, I just, yeah, I just like to yeah. see humans play. Mm-hmm. So which you do you know? like better dogs or cats? Dogs. Beaches or mountains? Oh, ah, that's tough. I'm gonna go with beaches though. Yeah. That's me too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like I, I'm my, one of my favorite places in the world is Tulum and I'm just like, but like not loud, messy, noisy Tulum now, but like chill, bohemian, um, Tulum that it was and just sit, chill, connect with the water, stare at the stars. Um, where's that Tulum? Yeah, it's, um, it's in Mexico. It's in the Riviera Maya part of Mexico. So it's like a hour and 45 minute drive from Cancun airport going South. Cool. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. If oh my god, it still is great. So <laughs> if you don't avoid avoid Cancun by all costs, but go to Tulum. It's magical and some of the most incredible food that I've ever eaten. Cool. That sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, check it out for sure. Who was your teenage celebrity crush? Luke Perry. Oh my gosh, wasn't And he then <laughs> and then I was at a hotel in Vancouver working on my very first film in 2015 and it's the hotel that all the actors stay at when they're filming and I'm talking to my girlfriend we're having a kiki the whole group and then he walks in to the building and I said I was like oh my god and I literally ran into the elevator with him and said nothing (laughs) (laughs) 
I just, I just pushed the fucking floor. Excuse my language. I just yeah. pushed the floor. I just pushed the floor um, and said nothing. I thought in my head, I knew I, what I, I knew what I was gonna say since I was 13, 12 years old. I thought I was gonna. It didn't. It didn't happen. And then that is funny. And then I came back, and my friends were like, "What? What just happened?" I was like, "I feel like a failure." And then that happened. So then now we're here for five weeks, right? So um, another time happens where I'm like, I'm like, I'm staying in the hotel and I'm like, I'm going to go to the gym. I need to go work out. I'm just sitting around. So I look like a boy. I have a baseball cap on, t-shirt, whatever, gross. So then elevator door opens for me to go to the gym and it's Luke Perry and Omar Epps. And all I did no is shake my, I, I, yep, that's what I did. I, sh- I shook my head. I said, nope. And I turned around and went back to the room. <laughs> I literally just said, nope, and turned around and walked I away. It's the best thing to do, though, because you make like when we I'm have these crushes, right? If you do talk to them and they're jerks, well, now your whole childhood has been ruined. So I think you yeah. did the right yeah. thing. OK, and, now, and, and then you double down with Omar Epps. No, I'm not doing this. I'm not ready. <laughs> I should have put on lipstick. This is dumb. This is dumb. I deserve this. I wasn't. My mom always said, never leave your house without your lipstick. So then fast forward. You know, two, three, yeah, two, two years later, he's at my one of my friends' 40th birthday party. I just I finally go up and just say hi. I just say hi. I'm Sky Marshall. And he was like, Oh, that's a cool name. I was like, Thank you. He was like, I'm I'm like, I know, I know, I know who you are. And then he was like, and he laughed, and that was that. And then a year after that, I talked to a friend of mine and she's a director. And then she I told her my obsession that I used to have with Luke Perry, and then she called him on the phone and said you have to hear this and I finally told him everything even the elevator moments and he was like I remember you were like so <laughs> awkward I was like that was me and I just need to tell you everything and I'm so glad that I got that out before he passed away because I would have just really been so angry at myself for not telling him how much a little black girl in Virginia was obsessed with him so yeah, yeah that was sweet that's great well what is your favorite holiday to celebrate oh ah that's tough I do love Halloween because my birthday is October 21st and my mother would always um do costume parties for me for my birthday uh-huh. growing up and while I'm not the type that pours a lot of money into costumes I really do love sitting around watching scary movies i love going to all the things leading up to halloween so like the hunted hay rides and the corn maze and i will bob apples i will drink the cider like i am the, there for i'm a i am an autumn baby to the core so yeah i think yeah. leading up october leading up to halloween is my most favorite time of the year yeah it's fun I mean, do you have a peak costume like your best one of recent of recent memory uh, yeah, the two two Halloween's ago, I was Maverick. So it was, I'm like, now he's big again. And I was on to it when everybody yeah. was like, what? And I'm like, you Gen Z wise, I don't know what he's on more. <laughs> You'll never get it. And I had this amazing Top Gun Maverick bodysuit, pilot suit. I had the boots on that I still keep from the Air Force. And I had my aviators on. My hair is slicked up in a tight bun. Like, I brought it. Waist was snatched. Hips were out. Nice. I crushed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So now I have to, I'm going to dust it off again. (laughs) My friends are like, girl, no, Maverick's done. (laughs) Everyone's going to be Maverick this year because of the film. So I was like, all right. So, yeah, I don't know. It's true. I was Wanda from WandaVision last year. So that was pretty Oh, fun. I love that. Mm-hmm. That's good. That was That's fun. That's really fun. That was fun. What are you going to be this year? Be Still debating. Uh, I haven't gotten my costume yet. Um, I know I might go Disney this year. Maybe Snow White. Oh, fun. I like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I was, uh, who's the, who's the, who's the, 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 the bad witch from Snow White? She's just the uh the mirror yeah Yeah. the isn't she just the evil queen i think that's just her name the evil i think that's what it was right just evil queen yeah 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 Yeah. i had i had her costume once and it was so rad because i didn't realize how warm it was and then that's where everything changed where i was like okay my halloween costume needs to be warm 
Um, so now I'm just looking at anybody that has a dress that fits the floor, a cape, um, a circle face out, <laughs> a crown, <laughs> give me the gloves. Like that's what's most important for me now at this yeah. age is can I be warm? I'm not trying to be cute and cold. Those days are, are long gone. For me, it's can I wear comfortable shoes? If I can't wear that's comfortable huge. shoes, then so I think I think you should be um, an astronaut then. Like I feel like that checks all. <laughs> yeah. And you'll have a mask on, so you'll be safe. That's true. I feel like that checks. That's true. Uh, <laughs> I should yeah. be astronaut. Yeah. <laughs> well, last question: What is your favorite Hallmark or romantic movie? Ah, uh, my favorite Hallmark romantic movie is to her with love that airs yeah. uh september 11th <laughs> um but i mean nothing to me nothing really kind of beats coming to america Ugh, oh i just yeah. a good one coming to america it was just i can recite that film and it was just the the, the writing the storyline the characters the time um it just again it was just like beautiful black love and you know he came from money she came from money but they both just put that aside and just tried to figure out who each other um who they were and if they liked or loved and I just and then and then just all the obstacle courses I love when there's obstacle courses that get in the way um to make someone fight for what they want and then winning it at the end, which Hallmark is really good at doing that. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm so excited. And I'm so happy that I got to chat with you, ladies. Yes, and, uh, thank you yeah, I so will be much. on the couch September 11th with my face buried under between two blankets, staring <laughs> um, at my mother the whole time for acknowledgement. Um, <laughs> well, we will be on Twitter tweeting about it. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. All and right. you have to check that out. You have a gift for interviews because you were great. Thank you so much. Thank you so oh, much. Thank yes. you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Do you, do you have social media you want to share or anything like that? Sure. Um, I'm really only on Instagram. Okay. And that is at Sky P Marshall. S K Y E P Marshall. Two L. Great. Well, very good. We're excited about the new movie and thanks again. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's the first of many on Hallmark Channel. Oh yeah. Let's let's (laughs) cross our fingers and toes. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Hey, bye. 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 Uh, We'd like to thank Skye for coming on the podcast. That was so much fun. She was a great interview. We had a great time. So definitely make sure y'all check out the movie coming out. And uh, Brie, where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram at brie.unabashedly. And I also co-host the Categorically Romance podcast. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all over social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out. Also, make sure you're following the podcast, at Hallmarkies Pod, Hallmarkies Podcast, all over social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave us your ratings and reviews, five stars. It really helps us a lot. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have the patron group and merch store. So check that out. All the information is in the description. And uh, thanks again to Sky. We had a great time and uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye everyone. Bye.